organic compounds are formed these compounds formation of these compounds is explained on the basis of bond harbor cycle the bond harbor cycle is based on the hazes law which states that the overall energy change in the process depends upon the energy of the initial and the final state not on the path forward that is whether the reaction is taking in the several steps or one step it is not going to depend upon applying to the hazes law bond in harbor related lattice energy with other energies like ionization potential electron affinity dissociation energy heat of formation thermodynamically the form cycle is known as the bond harbor cycle bond harbor cycle interrelates the factors contributing to the overall heat of formation which are namely ionization potential electron affinity heat of vaporization elements let us energy of the compound this we can see by the formation of sodium chloride sodium is formed in the solid form which for which we need that sodium should be changed to the gases state for changing the sodium from the solid to the sodium in the gaseous state we need some type of energy and this energy is your sublimation energy and which we can write as delta s sublimation that is the heat of sublimation equation s when sodium from the gaseous state changes to the sodium plus one ion that is an electron is removed that is a sodium ion is formed the amount of to remove this electron from the sodium gases at a energy is required and this energy is known as ionization potential similarly for the formation of a one mole of the sodium chloride molecule we need one mole of sodium chloride molecules needs one mole 
of sodium ion and one mole of chloride ion. That is, chlorine is formed in the form of chlorine gas, which is Cl2, and we need to dissociate this chlorine molecule. So the chlorine gas is acting. So as we need only one mole of the chloride ion, we will require half mole of the chlorine gas. And thus the, to dissociate the chlorine molecule, we will need half of the dissociation energy to form chlorine in the gases atom. That is, D is your dissociation energy. Now, since the chlorine in the gases atom is formed, this chlorine accepts an electron to form chloride ion. And here when the electron is being added to the neutral gases atom, the energy is released. This energy is known as your electron affinity. So we are having now sodium ion in the gases state and the chloride ion in the gases state. Now this sodium ion in the gases state combines with the chloride ion in the gases state to form sodium chloride. At this state when the, these two ions are forming sodium chloride, energy is released and this energy is known as Nettis energy. That is, these are the different parts from which the sodium chloride can be formed. Now, there can be other step also. When sodium combines with That is, this reaction is your a single step that is the gas. Now, as for the bond harbor cycle, the energy required in this and this, the net energy is always zero. That is, there is no change in the energy. Using all these reactions, we can draw a bond harbor cycle. How we can draw a bond harbor cycle? We can draw in this form. That is the sodium gases plus half Cl2 form NaCl. This is your heat of formation. This is a single one step reaction. If we take all the reactions which we have written earlier into the consideration, sodium from the solid states changes to sodium in the gases state, that is we need heat of sublimation this sodium from the gases state changes to sodium and in the gases state and here the energy is lost and I should put it here. Now, chlorine, it will dissociate, will require half of the dissociation energy 
to form chlorine in the gases. Here, an electron is sorry, I forgot. The electron is here. Now, this chlorine gas is atom accepts an electron to form chloride ion and forms a chloride ion in the gas. Now, this sodium ion and this chloride ion combines together to form sodium chloride and here the energy is released which is known as the lattice energy and is represented by writing U. This is your lattice energy. Here it is your electron affinity. So we can see that at the following this part, the above part formation of the sodium chloride and this is the single step from which the sodium chloride is formed. Similarly, we can draw the bond harbor cycle for magnesium chloride. In this case, since we need one mole of magnesium ion and two moles of chloride ions. That is, here since we have required only half a mole, so we have taken half of the dissociation energy. But here since we are requiring two moles of the chloride ions, so we will need complete dissociation energy. And we can draw the bond harbor cycle similarly as we have drawn for the sodium chloride. On other thing, we can also draw a bond harbor cycle for magnesium oxide. Here, we need one mole of the magnesium ion and one mole of the oxygen oxide ion. Now, here when the oxide oxygen molecule is dissociated, again we will require half of the dissociation energy to form oxygen atom in the gaseous state. But when this oxygen atom accepts an electron, that is only one electron, the amount of energy electron affinity is released and which is known as to form the oxide minus one ion. But since we require O minus two ion, the second electron affinity energy is your positive. That is, it is your Ea1, it has been released and here we have to add the energy. Why we are supposed to add energy? The energy should be released. The question comes to this to our mind. Since the size of the oxygen atom is very small, there is an attractive force from proton and electrons and at the same time there is a repulsive force between the electrons and electrons. Since the electron is going to be added in the same orbital, the repulsive force is greater than the attractive force. So, we need some of the energy to introduce the second electron to form the oxide ion. Now, this oxide ion is formed. Similarly, the magnesium will have the two ionization potential IP1 to form magnesium plus 1 and later second IP2 to form magnesium plus 2 ion. This magnesium plus 2 ion and this oxide minus 2 ion combines together to form the magnesium oxide. Now, whether this magnesium oxide will be stable or not, it depends upon the total energy. And what we found out, the total energy 
which we have supplied for the forming the magnesium oxide molecule. And total amount of energy released when a magnesium oxide molecule is formed, the total amount of the energy is greater than the total of amount of the energy supplied for the formation of the magnesium oxide. The bomb harbor cycle shows that we can calculate the amount of energy if other energies are known to us. That is, if I am knowing the sublimation energy, I am knowing the ionization potential energy, I am knowing the dissociation energy, I am knowing the electron affinity, then I can calculate the lattice energy. That is the bond harbor cycle is used to calculate any one of the energies when all other energies are known to us. Generally, we need to calculate electron affinity from the bond harbor cycle as the direct measure of the electron affinity is comparatively typical. bond harbor cycle also enable us to understand why some of the compounds are formed and why some of the compounds are not formed since we can see the, from the particular energies which we can see. Thank you so much. In the next video, we will study about the ionic structure.